A few feet to Beverly's left, Mary Ann Mormon in the dark coat took her picture a split second after the president had been fatally struck in the head. Although frequently examined by the FBI, her historic snapshot was too widely publicized to disappear. We know that the president's car was in the center. Its dramatic secret, however, has only recently been uncovered. After five years of intensive study of the Mormon picture by two researchers in Texas, Jack White and Gary Mack, there is at last convincing evidence of a gunman up on the grassy knoll. Is the guy that we call Badge Man. And it uh, appears to me that from our study of it, his waist is right at the top of the wooden fence. Gary Mack was the first to isolate the image now known as Badge Man. What I was looking at to a lot of people might have just been like looking at an ink blot or something. And all of a sudden I started to see eyes and ears and forehead and hair. And little by little the pieces of this uh, image started to make sense to me. Uh, and, and that's when I first called Jack. And uh, with his photographic work doing the blow-ups, we could see more and more and more detail. And at one point, we realized that this fellow was probably wearing a police uniform or some type of uniform that was close enough to what the Dallas police were wearing was, uh, so that he could pass as a police officer. And really, that, to me, that was the one scary moment because that was such a brilliant plan a police officer in that location, away from where people were watching, if anyone did see him, they wouldn't think anything about it because there were police in that area, although nowhere near where we see this guy. So this guy was an imposter. And I got chills then because that was the realization that this was a very cleverly well thought out plan. You have to keep in mind that the Mary Mormon picture is about this size and the area that we're dealing with is about a quarter inch square. So the area that Badge Man appears in is very tiny. And that's why the attempts to enhance it photographically have been very difficult uh, over the years. This small area was the scene of an extraordinary encounter. Behind the picket fence, there is a car park. And in 1963, Gordon Arnold was a 22-year-old serviceman, just out of training camp and en route to a posting in Alaska. This is his first film interview. On that particular morning, what happened was I came downtown and I thought there was going to be a parade. So what I did was I parked my vehicle back here in this parking lot. And I intentionally walked to this particular corner because I wanted to take a pictures of the parade off of the railroad bridge. Well, this is about as far as I got because what happened is when I got my leg to about this position, a man came around the corner off the bridge, had a suit on. And he turned around and he told me that I wasn't going to be there. And I guess I was younger and more spunky at that time because I told him, you and who else is going to keep me off the bridge? And he pulled out an identification card and he said, I'm with the CIA. And I said, well, that's enough muscle. I'll leave. So I turned around and I brought my leg back over like this. I walked down the fence line here about halfway. And I was looking over the fence to see if I could get a good shot of the parade. And he come back up and he told me, he says, I told you to get out of this area. And I said, okay. So I walked the complete length of the fence, got around on the other side. That's when I started to line up my frame so that I could take the picture of the parade. I had been panning shots through here so that I could get whatever was going to come down the street. And I saw that it was the president of the United States. And as I was panning down this direction, just as I got to about this position, a shot came right past my left ear. And that meant it would have had to have come from this direction. And that's when I fell down. And to me, it seemed like a second shot was at least fired over my head. It was, there was a bunch of report going on in, the, in this particular area at that time. And what happened was that while I was laying on the ground, it seemed like a gentleman came from this particular direction and I thought it was a police officer because he had a uniform of a police officer but he didn't wear a hat and he had dirty hands but it didn't really matter much at that time because with him crying like he was and with him shaking when he had the weapon in his hand I think I'd have gave him almost anything except the camera because that was my mother's and literally what the man did was kick, kick me and asked me if I was taking a picture. I told him that I was. And when I looked at the weapon, it was about that big around, and I decided I'd let him go ahead and have the film. I gave it to him, and then he went back off 
in this direction. I went off in this direction. And three days later, I was in Alaska. And I didn't come back to the United States for about 18 months. We spent a lot of time studying uh, the picture and looking at little details and I guess in the back of our minds was a story that had come out four years earlier uh, by a man named Gordon Arnold who claimed to be a witness to the assassination and claimed to have been standing up by the fence and there was a light blob of something uh, very close to where Badge Man was and we weren't sure what it was but gradually as details started coming out with Jack's photo work we realized that this image was probably Gordon Arnold and here's a guy who's, who had told his story just to a, an acquaintance and was overheard, and that story went off to the news media, and uh, Gordon Arnold was interviewed, and it appeared in the newspaper uh, that he had been at the scene and was in that location, but no one believed him because there were no uh, photographs or films that showed a man in that position. But all of a sudden, the Mormon picture confirmed his story. And again, the interesting part is that Gordon Arnold's story came out four years before we noticed uh, the appearance of this figure in the Mormon photograph. We later learned that uh, Arnold was wearing uh, this army cap that had a slight uh, point at the top and a medallion on the right hand side that said U.S. Army and it's exactly what we see in the photograph. We also know that Gordon Arnold was filming this scene with a movie camera and that's exactly what the photograph shows because we see the right arm of the person in this position uh, with his hand up toward his face uh, and what appears to be obstructing his face, uh, something perhaps like a movie camera. All right, you want to check that measurement once again? Yeah, this is about... Gary and Jack's work has been verified and duplicated by independent experts in Great Britain. Measurements taken in Dealey Plaza and from Mary Ann's original camera confirm that it was possible for the Badgeman figure to have fired the fatal headshot. Excellent view of the street from here see the center lane which is where the president was uh, and see that whole lane for almost the entire period it's a great position to be in yeah, from this position, but the photograph exactly had yet more to reveal i was sitting in my office here one day uh, looking at the picture and i saw what it, just all of a sudden what appeared to be uh, another image standing directly behind uh, the badge man uh, this is a appears to be a person in a hard hat and a white t-shirt uh, the lighting on him is entirely consistent with the lighting on Badge Man. Uh, in other words, there's a highlight on the uh, construction helmet that he seemed to be wearing. Uh, there's a shadow of his head down on his shoulders, and the, the lighting source is absolutely consistent with the rest of the picture. Uh, he, he appears to be looking off in the direction of the uh, school book depository. It was important in all this work that we develop somehow some independent corroboration for what we were seeing. And one of the important and yet often neglected witnesses in the Kennedy case is a railroad signalman named Lee Bowers, who was working in a railroad tower behind the picket fence and behind the grassy knoll. And he had a good view of the area uh, where we see these figures. And he testified to the Warren Commission and told them that uh, when Kennedy appeared in Dealey Plaza, there were two men behind the fence that he could see. And these two men were uh, in this one position the whole time before, during, and after the shooting. Lee Bowers died in a mysterious car accident two and a half years after the assassination. However, his story is confirmed by another eyewitness, Ed Hoffman, a deaf mute who is interviewed here for the first time. I'd gotten off work early because I had a dentist appointment. I was traveling down the freeway here and I remembered that President Kennedy was coming to visit Dallas. I parked my car here. I realized at this spot that I would be able to see Kennedy pass close by. I stood here and waited, and I was looking towards where he would be coming from. I suddenly saw two men who looked suspicious directly over there in the car park. 25 years ago, these trees did not obscure the view. From his position at the side of the freeway, Ed Hoffman could clearly see the car park area behind the grassy knoll. I saw a man standing here, wearing a black hat and a blue jacket. I saw a puff of smoke and I thought it was a cigarette, but it wasn't. He had a gun and he walked towards the railroad. He tossed the gun to the second man. Then he turned and straightened his jacket, adjusted his hat and walked casually away.
The man with the striped shirt, the railroad shirt, walked over to the electrical box with the gun. He took the gun apart. He put it in a toolbox. He then walked slowly away in the direction of the railroad track. When the motorcade passed by below me here, I realized that Kennedy had been shot. I was horrified. I saw a policeman standing on the railroad bridge, and I tried to get his attention, but he didn't see me. So I got in my car and drove to the area where I had seen the two men. But there were so many people there, and I couldn't find them. I went to the FBI to tell them what I had seen. They didn't want me to say anything. They offered me money to keep quiet. They didn't understand that it was more important for me to tell them what I'd seen. It was hard for me to communicate with them. I do feel that the two men I saw were working together, and that the one with the gun behind the fence was the man who shot President Kennedy. Look at the situation. The FBI started in the investigation right away, and they had all these reports, over 50 reports from eyewitnesses saying at least one of the shots came from that area. And here, all of a sudden, they've got a photograph that shows a precise area within a sixth of a second of when the president's head explodes. Someone somewhere in the FBI must have wondered, perhaps the gunman is in this picture. And I think they knew the evening of the assassination that there was a second gunman up in the grassy knoll. The medical evidence as it exists now does not indicate a shot from the front. But uh, we do have to understand that if Badge Man was firing, and if it was Badge Man's shot that struck the president in the head, that means the medical evidence has been altered. And there you've got conspiracy existing within the United States government. Despite the government, Gordon Arnold is certain of what he saw. The training that I had just finished, they were shooting live ammunition over us. And when a bullet goes past your ear and your eardrum feels like it's coming out the other side of your head, it's close. That's why I thought I was shot. There's no doubt in my mind that I was there, and it did occur. Further verification of Gordon's presence on the knoll comes from a surprising source, Senator Yarborough. During that shooting, my eye was attracted to the right. I saw a movement, and I saw a man just jump about 10 feet like at the old time flying tackle in football and land against a wall. I thought to myself, there's an infantryman who's either been shot at in combat or he's been trained thoroughly. The minute you hear fire, get under cover. This colorized version of the Badgeman picture was shown to Gordon Arnold for the first time. He has always believed there was no proof of his presence on the knoll that day. Looks like a soldier in, in summer uniform with an overseas cap on. It looks like it would have been my, my uniform. It looks like there's a a camera, or there's something up in front of the face. It looks like a, a, a white spot. If it's a flash, it would be like off of the a muzzle flash. This looks like a police officer because it, that would be the badge. That would be the arm emblem. Would, would this fellow back here be the, uh, the railroad man I asked you about this morning? Because when I was walking to the site, and I, I had never told anybody that I had, when we were out there filming, it, it reminded me that the, there was a, uh, a railroad worker just standing out there by the railroad tracks. But that, it, it, it looks like somebody's taking a, a picture. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure out why, why would I be standing crooked until I flipped that up and if that's a muzzle blast or flash, then whoever's standing there would have been a fool to stand up straight. He'd been trying to get away from harm's way is what it boils down to. 
And that could very well be me. Son of a gun. That would be the closest thing that I've ever, to be honest with you, the picture bothers me because if if this is uh, a true thing of what what has occurred, then I could be the only one that saw the man. They killed the president. And to be honest with you, if I'd have known this, I wouldn't have given the any interview. Cause that, that hits too close to home right now. If the figure is real, then that means the witnesses were correct and the researchers who have spoken of conspiracy for 25 years now were also correct. It means the Warren Commission was wrong. There was a conspiracy. The question then is, who was involved in the conspiracy? And alongside with that is, was Lee Harvey Oswald involved in the conspiracy? Uh, one of the good things the Warren Commission did was literally itemize the last few days of Lee Harvey Oswald's life. And the problem for the Warren Commission now would become, well, he had no opportunity to be with other people to plan something like this. So we now have to wonder seriously, perhaps for the first time, whether Lee Harvey Oswald even fired any shots.